Welcome back. We are continuing with our speedboat problem. So now we're trying to graph our profit function and we want to determine the maximum so that we can answer the question regarding whether or not the company should increase their production level in order to maximize their profit. So I'm going to demonstrate on a TI-84 plus color edition, but the keystrokes that I'm going to show you today will work on any TI-84 calculator as long as it's been updated. If it doesn't work, I will tell you the alternative keystrokes for a TI-83 or a TI-84 that has not been updated. So anytime we're going to graph, we are going to use our y equals button. So go to your y equals and you'll notice that the leading coefficient is negative. So it's very important that you use the button here that is your negative button instead of your subtraction key because this is a leading coefficient. We want to make sure that it's a negative. And then the fraction that we want to enter is 1 divided by 120. And if you're on a TI-84, the fastest way to enter a fraction is to use this shortcut menu, F1. And you'll see that it's in green, so to access it, you must use your alpha key, and then choose Y equals. And this brings up what we call the shortcut menus. There's actually four of them. And the very first one is the fraction shortcut menu. So you can choose number one, and that's going to create a vertical fraction for you. So you'll just enter one, and then use the arrow keys to arrow down into the denominator of your fraction. And then you would use the arrow right to enter out of your fraction. So that's how you're going to enter in negative 1 divided by 120 on a TI-84. Now let me just mention for everybody else, if you're on a TI-83, then you're going to want to go use your parentheses and then negative one, and then use your division button instead, and you'll enter your fraction sideways like this if you're on a TI-83, negative 1 divided by 120. But really important on a TI-83 that you include those parentheses. I'm going to clear and go back to my fraction shortcut menu again so that I can show you what it looks like on a TI-84. So the next thing we want to enter is the variable x cubed, and our variable key is right here on all calculators. And to raise this to a power, we're going to use this caret button, and we'll raise it to the third power. And then on a TI-84, you need to arrow to get out of the exponent. Next we have plus 5x squared. Now to square a quantity, you can use the caret like I just showed you or you actually have a button just for squaring right here, you could use the x squared button. Either way, they both work. Minus 370x minus 4,500. And now we have the entire function entered into our y equals. So next we want to graph. And you'll notice at the top you have five buttons, and these are all of the buttons that are related to graphing any function on your graphing calculator. And rather than hitting the graph button, I always recommend that you actually start with the zoom button. So choose zoom, and you'll see that the sixth one down is Z standard. And I always want you to start with number six, zoom standard. And you can either arrow down to get to number six, or you actually could just type the number six here, and that will select the sixth one. This is a standard viewing window, which means that we are going from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis, and negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. So I always like that you start with a standard viewing window, because you never know what problem you were on previously and how your window may be slightly different from a previous problem or maybe even somebody else borrowing your calculator. And you'll notice right away that I don't see anything. But if I go back to my function and actually take a look at it, notice that when x is equal to 0, if I put 0 in for all these x's, I have negative 4,500. So my y-intercept is negative 4,500. So looking at my graph, since my y-axis only goes down to negative 10, it's no surprise that I'm not seeing much of this graph right now. So we need to determine an appropriate window. So find your window button. And I always recommend that you just change one thing at a time. Don't change too many things in your window. 
So let's begin by thinking about, in this context, what does the variable x represent? x is the number of boats produced. And the problem tells us that the company is currently making 340 boats. So it would be logical to change our x maximum to a value bigger than 340. So pick a number larger than 340. I'm going to choose 400. And if this isn't big enough, then of course we can adjust this later. But I'm only going to choose to change one item at a time. And I'll go ahead and hit my graph key again. And now I see part of the graph here. On mine, it's in blue. If you're not on a color edition, you'll just see it in, in black. So at least we see part of the graph. But we do not see the S shape that we're expecting. And again, that's because of our Y axis here. It's only going to 10. Now in this function, the Y values represent the profit. So this is only going to a profit of $10 we're probably making a lot more money if we're making boats. So it would be useful to figure out how much money are we currently making if the company is making 340 boats. So one way to figure out an appropriate window is to use the table feature of your calculator. So that's above the graph key. So I'm gonna hit my second button and go to my table. So now on my table, it's showing that when I make zero boats, I have a negative profit, negative 4,500. And we would like to see how, many, how much money we're making when we make more boats. So one way to do that is just to arrow down through your table. You can scroll down and start to see your Y values change as we make more and more boats. But this would be pretty tedious if I was trying to arrow until I got to 340. So it's going to be more efficient for us to use our table settings feature. So that's above window. So find your second button and choose window. And let's choose our table. Let's let it start at 340 boats. So I'll change my table start to 340. Then go back to my table. So second table. And now I can see a value here. When I make 340 boats, I have a profit of 30, 360,500 divided by 3. Now, your calculator may not be giving you this fraction answer. Your calculator may be giving you a decimal, which is great. If you're like me and your calculator is returning to you this fraction, then let me show you how to change that. You're going to find the mode button on your calculator. And you'll notice if you go down in your mode, there's an option that says answers and you can change it from auto to decimal. So arrow down to the one that says answers and then arrow to the right and press enter. Be sure you press enter so that you select decimal. Now when you go back to your table, second table, you'll see now you don't have a fraction any longer. However, I don't actually have a decimal, do I? You have to be really careful in the table because these values, they may be rounded values. So to figure out if they're rounded, you can arrow to the right and highlight that Y value. And then at the bottom here, it's going to tell you what the actual Y value is with some more decimals of accuracy. So you'll see this is actually a rounded value that was shown in the table because when we make 340 boats, my profit's actually 120,166 point six repeating. So this tells me I need to change my Y values to a much larger profit in order for me to see the graph. So I'm using the table to inform my decision regarding what I'm going to choose for my window. So let's go back to the window. This time I'm going to arrow down and change my Y max. And we just said the profit was around 120,000. So let's choose something larger than 120,000. Maybe I'll put in 130 thousand for my y max and then graph and hopefully we see a little bit more of the graph and indeed we do. Now this still doesn't actually look like the full cubic. We would expect there to be more to this graph but I'm not seeing it because I'm not seeing very much along the negative x-axis. So if I wanted to change my window one more time I could change my x minimum and then choose something much smaller than negative 10 let's say like negative 400, 
just so that you could start to see the entire cubic shape. Now we start to see the cubic shape we expected. However, in the context of this problem, negative x values don't really make sense because x is the number of speedboats produced, and we can't make negative boats. So you can leave it like this, or if you prefer to just go back to what we had before, which was negative 10, or even 0. 0 would be a logical starting place. Then you don't have to worry that you're not seeing the entire graph, because we're really seeing the maximum here, which is what we need. So to calculate a maximum or a minimum, you're going to use the calc menu, which is above the trace key. So let's go second, calc. This time we're going to choose number four, which is maximum. And you're going to be prompted for the left bound, which means you see this little cursor that's blinking. I often call it the bug. We want to make sure that this bug is clearly to the left of the maximum that we're trying to calculate. So right now where my bug is, it is definitely to the left of the maximum that I need. So I can just press enter. Now if your bug was not to the left, then you would use your left and right arrow keys and move it until it was definitely to the left of the maximum. Now we're being asked for a right bound. So I'm going to use my right arrow key and I am going to arrow you can just keep your finger on it if you want to, and just arrow that bug or that cursor over so that I am clearly to the right of the maximum that I'm looking to compute. Be sure you're far enough over so that you're definitely to the right, and press enter. So now the calculator is going to compute the maximum that is in between these two arrows. So you don't really need to make a guess because there's only one maximum in between the arrows, so just press enter and it's going to calculate the maximum for you. So I would definitely write down this coordinate on my paper. We have a, a local maximum at 358.75 roughly. That's the number of votes and the profit, the maximum profit there is $121,506.27. So answering the question, should the company increase their production level in order to increase their weekly profit, the answer is yes. If the boats made right now are 340, we want to increase our production because this number, 358.7, is clearly larger than 340. However, let's really be accurate with our answer. Since we can't make a fraction of a boat, should we make 358 boats or should we make 359 boats? We can't really answer that question until we determine the profit for both of those different values. So the last thing I want to show you on your calculator is how to get a Y value for a specific X value. And there are a number of ways of doing this. I'm going to show you though how to do it off of the graph. So we're going to go back to that calc menu. So second, calc, but this time we're going to choose number one that says value. And you'll notice this lets you enter in any X value that you want. So let's put in 358 votes, press enter, and that will tell us that the profit will be $121,504.07. Now let's do the same thing and enter 359 votes. Second, calc, choose number one, value and enter 359 this time, and you notice the profit is actually a little bit larger. $121,506 is the profit for making 359 votes, and there's about a $2 difference. So yes, the company should increase their production, and they should increase it to making 359 votes each week in order to maximize their profit.